morning, church. Good morning. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, church. Thank the Lord for the Sabbath day. We thank Him that we've been enjoying the Sabbath so much, so it's now afternoon. We say the benediction, right? Thank the Lord for being with us this week as we studied um, on the prayer line. So many beautiful insights given, uh, encouragement and uh, knowledge imparted. Uh, we thank God for week after week strengthening and confirming in the faith and reassuring that we must march on in doing God's work. And as we march on, we are heading for a conflict. We saw it in Sabbath school this morning. When powerful people in this world speak, they talk with power behind them. Um, I'd like Brother Mendes to bring up that slide again he showed in Sabbath school. We only need one. We're not in a bubble here. We're not pretenders. We are not schizophrenic. We know who we're up against. It's right before you on the screen. When those people talk, you listen. They have done it before. When this man says Christians should never seek to convert unbelievers. <laughs> See my pagans? Leave them alone. Yeah. Yeah. You see my pagans? They bring me money. Mm -hmm. yeah. They serve me faithfully. Yeah. It's another guy behind him who is speaking. We see him in Revelation 12. He's called the devil and yeah. Satan and this old, that old serpent yes. who nailed Jesus to the cross. Yeah. He knows he has a short time. Yes. He knows we are the ones who are sitting seated back in our living rooms. We are the one who is riding placidly on the stream. Uh, like Catherine liked to sing, uh, row your boat, row your boat gently down the stream. That's, that's us. On his side, he knows what he's getting, he has gotten himself into. He's angry. And he hates every one of us. Do you know why? Yes. Why? Because Christ has died for us. Yes. And every time he looks at you, he sees God. Because we were made in his image. And he hates us. And he's determined through the means of subtlety. Rehearse that word in your minds. Look it up. Read it over and over again. S-U-B-T-L-E-Y. Subtlety. That's how he works. He doesn't come in your face. Because if you know who he really is, he'll, he'll run for safety. Like those two birds sitting on the branch. Two little birds, two parakeets. And the snake is coming. They have wings. They can fly. He can't fly. He can't even jump. And he comes. He doesn't come from behind. Right in their face. I have lunch. How does that happen? How does a snake snare a bird right in its face? That's what he's doing to us. As we study today. We're in Smyrna, Revelation chapter 2. I don't want to scare you. I want you to have a reality check. I want you to understand that you have an enemy. But Jesus has promised us eternal life. And nothing should stand between us and eternal life. Amen. Nothing. If you want to accept this 70 miserable 
uh, years down here and call it quits. Fine. But you have no idea what you're missing. Eyes have not seen. No ears heard. It, ha it has not even entered into our minds. If you want to have an idea, the next time you eat something really nice, an East Indian mango perhaps, I don't know what you love to eat. Just think of the person who delicately wired your tongue so you could taste it. Just, just, just try and figure that out. The next time you love somebody, think of who gave you the capacity to do that, to love. You think you have something now? You ain't seen nothing yet. He said it. So as we study Smyrna today, others have gone before and they have laid an example that we should follow. We are going to look at it. Because what you saw on the screen, that guy is not going to back down. And you know what? Some of us in this very room are not going to back down either. Amen. I hope all of you will join us. Let us pray as we study. Our eternal Father and our God, the potentate of the universe, you've called these feeble few to gather before you this morning to honor and glorify your name. Glory to your name, you've fed us. You've sent us to school, you've clothed us, you've given us a place to live, and you've reminded us that the Sabbath day is your holy day. Amen. We could still be in darkness, my grandparents were, and they thought otherwise, but you have given us the light. And as you gather us today, and we open your word, we pray, Lord, that you will send your angels to write upon our hearts today. And to put words in my mouth that I may not speak of Paul Forrest, but I will speak the thus saith the Lord. Amen. We thank you, Lord. What a great privilege we have. What a great account you have laid up for us. We thank you for it. And we pray that you'll help us to go on from victory unto victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we prepare... To look at Smyrna. I once worked for the Dutch government in Port Antonio, Jamaica. And my job was to uh, start a poultry industry, a small scale poultry industry. And so I started my poultry industry. And some of the farmers that I was training how to grow chickens 25 and 50 and so on. It was meant to be a kind of chick a kitchen project. So women would have chicken to cook for themselves and their children. And you know, yeah, there's a surplus, you could sell it and make some cash on the side. So most of these farmers were small farmers, small poultry farmers. We had to teach them how to grow chickens properly and how to slaughter them and process them and keep the meat in good quality if they were planning to sell and use it for their kitchen. And some of the farmers I served had a particular name, Applebee's. And later we found out that these very ordinary peasants owned two parcels of land left for them by their great-grandfather, 900 acres of prime real estate in Port Antonio, prime, and another parcel, 800 acres. And added to that, they found out that there were three accounts in England, one added 58 million pounds, and another 42 million pounds, and another, I don't remember the sum but millions of pounds. They were buying 25 chickens to raise and feed their children. And if perchance there was a surplus, they would sell the rest to make pocket change to live their very ordinary lives. Because 
somewhere between great great grandpa and them things got missing and they didn't know that they were wealthy they owned the very best land in Port Antonio, Jamaica and they had millions of pounds sitting in England but they did not know and every time I remember the Applebee's, I, it brings my mind to us. I can't get over Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. Turn with me. The great wealth that Jesus has laid up for us. And we are here like peasants. Uh, scrolling around on TV screens trying to get entertainment. Mm -hmm. Trying to find satisfaction in KFC. Mm -hmm. And the Domino's. Mm -hmm. And Papa John's. Mm -hmm. Trying to find satisfaction mm -hmm. in the NFL Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And the list goes on. Based, based, based things that have nothing to do with anything. Mm. We're scratching the barrel of earth, trying to be somebody, trying to find a claim in a PhD, or a master's degree, or driving a Lexus or a Mercedes. Mm. Who needs Bentleys when you can fly? Mm. When you travel at the speed of thought, who want to be enslaved in a Bentley? For what? We have lost our heritage. The devil has played a game on us. And we think that we have a claim when we are nothing. In verse 8 of Revelation chapter 20, uh, verse 4 rather, John said, I saw. God gave him a glimpse of our destiny. This is after it is all over. You want to see your future? Read Revelation 20 and verse 4. I saw thrones and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. Who are these? They? Is it the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? No. Or angels, perhaps? No. Cherubims and seraphims and exalted beings? Us. Us! It's a destiny! Judgment was given unto them. Who are, the, who are these? They. And I, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. You love your head better than Jesus, keep it. But all you get here is a beautiful funeral. That's it. And for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon his forehead or in their hands, and they what? Live and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Who reigns? Royalty. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. I saw thrones. Next to the Father is Jesus. I can't get over this. I may tell you again next week because it's so marvelous. And next to Jesus is us. Amen. Not angels. No. Not terrible. Mm -hmm. Us. Amen. And we are fighting for foolishness down here. Mm -hmm. For letters. For a claim that means nothing. For 70 measly years of pain and disease. Your first assignment in heaven 
will last you a thousand years seated beside Jesus as kings and queens. This, this, is, this, is, this is the universe we're talking about now. But I, I, I imagine like the apple is in Port Antonio. This is too wonderful. Uh, somebody must have that money. I don't think I'll get it. I'll go on to forest and I'll continue to buy my 25 chickens. And live my peasantry life. It's, it's, it's just too amazing. Me, a millionaire. But to get there, we have to make a sacrifice. Yeah. For the word says, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. They loved not their lives unto death. Jesus says, if you do not hate father, mother, wife, children, indeed your very selves can't be my disciple. Right. Can't be my disciple. Let's look at Smyrna. They qualified. They are gone through. It's like when you're watching the World Cup soccer. And this team has already qualified. Your match is up next. Will my team win? Let's look at Smyrna. Take, take out your packets. The word says in Revelation chapter 2, and unto the angel of the church of uh, Smyrna writes, the faithful and true witness, turn with me to Revelation chapter 2. Let's remind ourselves we already looked at Ephesus. Desirable. Ephesus. Desirable. Ephesus. Desirable. The desirable church. The church that the apostles created themselves. And in that church we saw purity. Absolute purity. And when Satan saw them in their purity, he launched his attack. That was when the church went into the period of Smyrna. That's in chap uh, chapter 2, verse 8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things say the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Jesus is the only one who was dead and is alive forevermore. Amen. I know thy works. And the tribulation is cognizant of what that guy has said. He knows the threat that we are under. He's quite aware. He can cause us to avoid it. But this sailing into heaven, <laughs> driving in white Bentleys, <laughs> and walking on people, a carpet of, of members, <laughs> is not leading to that heaven. <laughs> it's a heaven, but not the one that Jesus is king of. Amen. It's a destructible heaven. It will be destroyed by fire. Yes. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art really rich. Your pocket may be running low, but you're spiritually rich. The riches that matters. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not who are Jews from the record who are Jews give us some Bible people. give us some Bible who are Jews Romans chapter 2 28 Galatians 3 same verse 28 29 tell us who are Jews for he is not a Jew for he is not a Jew is one outwardly. Who is one outwardly? Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. Neither the circumcision 
which is outward, God said to Abraham, circumcise all the males. That circumcision in this regard, Jesus says, Jesus' apostle said, doesn't cut it. I would like to tell my friends down the hallway, but they might stone me. Not that I'm afraid of them stoning me so much, but I don't want to irritate them on duty. Yeah. Judaism, and being a Jew, is not that which is of the flesh, or the circumcision of the foreskin. You have some more for us, sister. Uh, I think I lost it. <laughs> lost it? <laughs> Romans 3, 2. Is it Romans 2? Yes. Verse 29 now. Okay. 4 E. Okay, I read that. 29. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. He is a Jew which is inwardly. Was 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 Paul a Jew? Yes. yes. He's writing his letter to the Roman church. The Christian church in Rome. And in Philippians chapter 3, he gives his distinction of his lineage of the tribe of Benjamin, circumcised the eighth day, touching the law, blameless. A Pharisee of Pharisees. If there's any that could earn righteousness by works, it's me. He looked at himself in the, the mirror, perfect Jew, and he says, it does not count for anything. I count it as dumb. For a Jew is not one outwardly of the flesh, but a Jew is inwardly. Uh -huh. And circumcision is that of the heart. And the circumcision is that of the heart. Finish it. In the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Amen. I don't care how much they want to praise you. People praise you when they love you. And you criticize them, they say the worst things about you. Yeah. That's the order of the day in which we live. True. Such praises doesn't matter. You want to see good praise? Skip over to Job chapter 6. Job and then Psalm. Reverse one, one book. Beyond Psalm. Job chapter 6 or chapter 2. Top chapter 2. Verse 1. And again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? Satan answered the Lord. Verse 1 said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. It is now mine. I took it from Adam. It's mine. It's my property. I walk up and down in it. You should know that you are God. Verse 3, and the Lord said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in all the earth. A perfect and upright man. One that feareth God and destroyeth or despise him. He despise you. He's right there in earth. The dominion you claim as yours, he despises you. He fears me. Have you considered him? You don't own earth. There are those in earth that will never heal. Yes. They will never give in. Word says they love not their lives unto death. And still he holdeth fast his integrity. Although thou movest against him to destroy him without. A cause. You want somebody to talk good about you? Let him. Amen. 
Let him, says, have you considered my servant? Whatever your name is, put it in there. Yes. Perfect, upright. That's the distinction we must reach for. For today, they'll say lovely things about you. And tomorrow they'll switch. What good is that? Doesn't matter the medals you have on your chest. Doesn't matter how well you served in the Korean War or Vietnam, if you don't say the things they like, they'll count you as trash and they'll say the worst things about you. Anybody listening to me this morning? Amen. Galatians chapter 2. Chapter 3, run. Same verse. Yes, sir. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Emphasize verse 29. And if he be Christ, if he be Christ, if you belong to Jesus Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and hears according to the promise yeah you are here you are counted as a seed of abraham you don't have to go to jerusalem you don't have to claim a piece of the real estate over there jesus will give it to you in time if you belong to him Amen. you are of his lineage thou hatest them that say they are jews and are not yes. The symbolism here is he hates those who say they are Seventh-day Adventists and are not. Why call yourself the name? How do you go and say to the Pentecostal man, come, come over and join us? You know, get out of your filthy living, Sunday worship, pork eating, shrimps eating, clean up your life and come to what? How do you evangelize? When your organization is in a mess, mm -hmm. calling people from sin to greater sin, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Don't go mock God before the Philistines. If you are calling them out of sin, you must call them to purity. Yes, sir. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen. Promise. He that believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. Yes. Does that make a mockery of God? The name is not going to get us anywhere. Not at all. The name must be our character. Amen. A people who believe in the imminent return of Christ. Yes. And the people who are steadfast in spite of what that guy threatens. So what? Let him threaten. Like the three evil boys. In Revelation, in Daniel chapter 3. King, with all due respect, we are not going to worship the golden image. So you just have to cast us into the fire. The God we serve can deliver us out of your hands. Amen. Whether or not he's going to, we don't know. And that is not our business. But we know he can. Amen. So we're not going to bow. We have one God, and it is his business to protect. It is his business to choose to save. And so let it be. Yeah. It was not fake fire. For those who took them to the fire, they were consumed. Yes. But God has a way of protecting his children. Amen. Amen. That is what we seek. So Smyrna. Smyrna. To the people in Smyrna. Um, in your record, in the record, we saw we were at this account of a beautiful maiden. It's on page 53. She was of noble birth. 
And when she saw them destroying the Christians, she was moved. What kind of people are these who, who give their lives for, for a cause? Uh, this, this, this is different. We pagans run to protect our lives. They are giving their lives. They are walking into the fire with dignity. Uh, they are walking to death with praise. And when she studied them, she decided she wanted to give her life to Christ. Amen. Will someone pick up in the middle of page 53? Throughout the period of time from 1898 to 305. Let's look at a bit of history. Because sometimes we think it's a fairy tale. It's nice to talk. It's beautiful to say. But to drink the cup is another matter. True. I agree. I admit. But the very same Christ who gave them power and the distinction over death can give us today. He's here today. He's not dead. He said to John, John, I am alive, and I was dead, but I am alive evermore. Yes. And guess what, John? I have the keys. I took the keys from that guy. <laughs> I have, Reggie, you should be saying amen. amen. Oh, my God, he has the key. Yes. You can't die in Jesus. It's an impossibility. You may go to sleep for a few. Well, considering the 6,000 years is almost over, you may go to sleep for a few weeks. That's right. Just in a moment. Adam is the one who got the good sleep. Because he has been sleeping a long time. You're going to get a cat nap. You're not even going to sleep a long time. Don't trade your eternal salvation for Anything. Amen. 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 Who, who, is, who, who is there? I have much to share today. I know I'm only short on time. <laughs> throughout the, can we start? Yes. Okay. Throughout the period of time from AD 98 to 305, the fidelity of the Christians was witnessed by many as thousands of followers of Christ gave their lives as martyrs. In one story, several thousand Christians assembled to celebrate the birth of Jesus. The temple where they were congregated was surrounded by pagans, and the buildings soon became locked up by the forces assembled outside. The Christians were called upon to offer incense to Jupiter or else be burned alive. The answer came from within. We are all Christian. Christ is our only God and King. Amen. 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 That's our God and King. Amen. Yes. We not any, not any man around here. Not no general conference president. Amen. We will give you the um the respect if you respect God. Amen. Follow me, Paul says, as I follow Christ. Yes. Amen. So those who are not following Christ, we cannot. Follow them. Amen. The word says the blind lead the blind and the leader fall into the ditch. No, no, they both fall into the ditch. We go to school, we can read. We're not in time of illiteracy. We may have many illiterate people among us, those who refuse to read, but non illiterate. Why should we follow the black? <laughs> Why? Paul says, how oh, shall we escape if we neglect yes. so great a salvation? Yes. How? The question has no answer. He's flabbergasted. He's at his wit's end. How? The blind follow the blind and they both fall into the ditch. Not falling in the blind into no ditch. Amen. I have no excuse. Exactly. The Holy Spirit has promised to be our teacher. Yes. Our individual teachers. Yes. Study, he says, to show yourselves approved unto God. A righteous man needeth not be ashamed. Rightly 
dividing the word of truth. Study! And Jesus will lead. It's not full of foolish men who glorify carnal things. Read for us, sister. We will worship him and his Father and the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And we are now ready to be offered to God. Yes. The response of the pagans was tragically predictable. The temple was set as a light, uh -huh. and thousands of men, women, and children were burned alive. All right. On another occasion, the emperor sent an edict to a city in Phrygia. 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 Okay. Commanded the citizens to worship the official idols. The mayor and his fellow leaders confessed that they, and all those in the city, were Christians. As a result, the whole city was incinerated. Its inhabitants were burned alive. Yes, but it's not over. For it is appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. Everybody, everybody, everybody who is dead will come back to life. Either in the first resurrection or the second. If you wake up 1,000 years late, you're not going to like it. Make sure you wake up early. That is if you go to sleep because the coming of Christ is near. Yes. And you may be among those who are alive, Paul says, and we which are alive and remain shall be what? Caught up. And we shall be changed in the moment at the blink of an eye at the last trump. We are not all going to sleep. We will pass through hell. But many of us will see him coming. Amen. I firmly believe that. That is why I am a Seventh-day Adventist. Yes. Because I really believe the coming of Christ is Amen. so, so near. Yes. Yes. It is the time when people will be least looking for him. Yes. Which is no. Yes. Sister White says it in the last chapters of the Great Controversy. Over and over again, she says, for 6,000 years, the devil is allowed to carry out his work of ruin. Then she says in uh, Paychecks and Prophets, the uh, chapter 72, no, no, these are ages, chapter 72, the one on the communion service. For 4,000 years, the lamb pointed to Jesus' death. 4,000 years, AD 31. Take away 4,000, 2,000 left. How long ago did Jesus die in AD 31? Mm -hmm. We don't want the date and the hour. We're not time setting. No, we we use this. Yes. It's over. Mm -hmm. If you have money, spend it. <laughs> <laughs> I do not admonish watching movies, but there's one you must watch. Schindler's List. That's going to be you if you have a lot of money. Crying. Yeah. Weeping when you realize that your money could have saved ten more. All right. If you only let us invest the money together in the work of the Lord. Yes. Instead of doing third feeding 30 children in Haiti, we could feed 300. Yes. You're going to cry. Where are we? You got me carried away. Who stresses of Arabes witnessed the endurance of the martyrs and was so affected that he himself thirsted for martyrdom. Huh? Imagine that. Imagine that. You think these people are crazy, don't you? Yeah. They are crazy. Wow. Let's go on. When he openly professed his faith in Christ, he was rebuked for his vanity and madness. <laughs> he was arrested, cruelly beaten, and burnt alive. But if he's crazy, why are you beating him? Amen. If he's crazy, why are you burning him alive? Exactly. You are the one who is crazy. Amen. We don't beat mad people. <laughs> we don't go on the street that we see the crazy people eating out the garbage and we beat them. We don't do that. We shouldn't. The persecutions of that time were so great that some ancient authorities claimed that under Diocletian's persecution, all the Christians in Britain were utterly destroyed. In Portugal, a beautiful maiden of noble birth by the name of Eulalia, 
left, okay, became a sincere and devout believer, turning her back on worldly pleasures. When persecution fell upon her fellow Christians, she took a bold stand on, her, on their behalf, and through the much prayer, she was given a remarkable spirit of resistance. Her parents had to move to the countryside to save her from martyrdom. However, Eulai was, <laughs> was so moved by the Holy Spirit that she stole away by night and traveled through harsh terrain and darkness until she reached Emerita, Emerita, the city from whence her parents had fled. She confronted the tribunal and rebuked them for their slaughter of good people. She said, Behold, I am one of the Christians, an enemy to your devilish sacrifices. I spurn your idols under my feet. I confess God omnipotent with my heart and mouth. Isis, Apollo, and Venice. What are they? What are they? Maximus himself, what is he? The one a thing of naught, for that they be works of men's hands, the other but a castaway because he worshipped worshipeth the same work. Maximus falleth down before a stone. Go to therefore thou a hangman, burn, cut and maddle those these thou these earthly members. It is an easy matter to break a brittle substance. But the inward mind thou shalt not hurt for anything thou canst do. Amen. Amen. This is the account oh, of a young man. Oh. Her bold stance. Amen. Her defiance of the devil like Job. Amen. It's in the one she's really talking to. Yeah. yeah, you can break my bones. You know what? But you can't break the mind. Amen. Amen. This is the mind. Our mind is too easy. Easily swayed. You know, in our medical world now, they order us to take a vaccine. Yeah. Someone demand that you put in your body a vaccine, whether you like it or not. I don't get it. This is my body. You're telling me I must take the vaccine, or else, or else what? It can't work. It can't work. You are short 800,000 nurses. It's going to 2 million by the turn of the, 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 the next year. And you're telling me I have to take your vaccine? No, we shouldn't do that. This is my body. See? And the virus is mutating so fast that by the time I get the vaccine, the strains that are out there are brand spanking you. It's useless. So because some wise guy wants to sell vaccine, they order us to, and we comply. That's slavery. When somebody outside of your body orders you to take something and you comply, or else, it should never be. Hmm. In fury, the judge decreed, Hangman, take her and put her out by the hair of her head. <clears throat> Pull her out of her. I'm sorry. Pull her out of her hair. Pull her out <clears throat> by the hair of her head. Her head and torment her to, uh, to the utmost. <coughs> then, sensing her youthful beauty, he changed his attitude and said, "Wilt thou kill thyself? So young a flower, doth not the glistering and golden pomp of a bride be dead? Move thee. Behold." Here the furniture ready to prepare for thy terrible death. Either shalt thou be beheaded with this sword, or else with these wild beasts shalt thou be pulled in pieces. Or else thou, being cast into the fiery flames, shall be consumed to ashes. If thou wilt but take and put with thy fingers a little salt and incense into the censers, thou shalt be delivered from all these punishments. Paganism. Yeah. Paganism. For years we've been preaching to the world that the man of sin is not Christian. Mm -hmm. He doesn't follow Christ. 
And one of these days, as written in the great controversy, if you haven't read that book, get it. Read it. These, these writings are hundreds of years old. And it's like reading the morning paper. Here is this man telling us not to win pagans to the faith. Which Christian preached that? You see the inner him coming out now. The devil can't hide forever. Exactly. One day he must reveal how many people have mocked us and laughed at us and we are crazy, we are haters. We don't love and we preach a hate gospel. What hate gospel? When we are telling you that this guy is a master at his art of deception. We don't hate. If I saw your house just catching fire on route to church. And I came here and sat all day until evening. And then I said, you know, I, I knew your house was on fire, but I didn't want to spoil your Sabbath. And wherein you could have delivered some of your goods. I, a wonderful, loving Christian, sat in church and didn't upset you on the Sabbath. And now everything, everything is ashes. Well, you know what? I love you. Because I didn't want to upset you. I didn't want to spoil your day. That's what you want me to do. So if I won't do it in the temporal, should I do it in the spiritual? Uh -uh. I'd rather upset you. If you don't want to do something about it, you don't want to go out the fire, if you don't want to change course, you want this man to continue deceiving you? It's up to you. But I have told you the truth. Amen. Let us carry on a little more. What's your name? You live here. Did not reply, but instead threw down the idols and kicked <laughs> over the incense. Amen. A smart woman. Her executioners took her, pulled her joints apart, and, yeah, and used talons of tear the flesh, to tear the flesh of her side to the bone. Mm. Through it all, you and I praise God with singing. Behold, O oh Lord, I will not forget thee. What a pleasure it is for them, O oh Christ, that remember thy triumphant victories to attain unto these high dignities. This sign, she, this sign, she was a bold, this sang she with a bold voice, neither lamently, lamentingly, or weepingly, but held glad and merry. Thank you. The last and final torment was not only the goring and wounding of her body with the iron grave and girl, and terrible hollowing of her flesh, but the burning on every side with flaming torches. Wow. But when the crackling flames reached the crown of her head, then she, desiring swift death, opened her mouth and swallowed the flame, and so rested she in peace. Amen. Wow, she's brave. Stop brave, brethren. When we dedicate our lives to God, Amen. He does something. I don't. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure it. what. Yeah. Imagine these three evil boys were thrust into the fire. Yeah. The hair of their head, you know, wasn't singed like mine. Um, their, er, their socks, no, 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 not singed or burned, not even the smell of fire was upon them. Daniel went into the lions then. Some say that the lions weren't hungry. But that was just Daniel, one man. But when the families of those who instigated his death were thrown in, the word says they cracked their bones. Immediately they, they hit the bottom, the lions are up on them. But why didn't they eat Daniel? Yeah, because the Lord was there with them. He yeah. says, I know your works. Yes. I know it. I am going to be there with you. Amen. I will preserve you. I will keep you. Yes. And this was when the church was beautiful and pure. Now we have a physical riches, but we are spiritually poor. We are wretched and miserable and blind and naked, and we don't even know it. 
In Gaul, a Roman legion comprising 6,660 men was a Christian and was led by a Christian named Eurytus. When the emperor ordered the legion to attack Christians, they refused. In revenge, the emperor executed every tenth soldier. The victims committed themselves to God with great joy, encouraged by their leader, Eurytus. Eurytus was summoned to the emperor and in his defense, he declared, we are your soldiers, but also the servants of God. Amen. We will rather obey him than you. Yes. We offer here our hands against any other enemies, but to defile our hands with the blood of innocence that we may not do. Behold, here we cast down our weapons and resist not. For that we would rather be killed than killed, yes. and guiltless to die than guilty to live. Amen. We are here ready to suffer fire and sword and any other torments. We confess ourselves to be Christians. We cannot persecute Christians, nor will we do sacrifice to your devilish idols. The emperor subsequently ordered another tenth of the legion to be executed. When the remainder still refused to murder their fellow Christians, Caesar ordered the whole army to destroy the Christian legions. The Christian legions made no resistance, yielding their lives to their persecutors. What a telling testimony was borne by the early Christians. As John the Revelator declared, they overcame him, that Satan, who is the real instigator behind this evil, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. We say we are Christians. We say we are Seventh-day Adventists. But you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. So God must test us. Let, he knows the real ones. Yeah. But you see, if he accuses me, you are going to say, God, that was a fear. We know Brother Paul. Mm -hmm. And you heard what they just call him? The real article. Mm -hmm. So God wants to show you that I'm fake. Mm -hmm. So he brings the fire and the sword. And that's when I run. That's when you realize that, oh, so you really mean Forrest was really a fake? <laughs> he wasn't the real article? God is going to test us. Yes. Because we must prove ourselves to the watching universe true. Not, not so much the God. He, he knows. He could come and cherry pick all those that are faithful to him. But then we would cry foul. You didn't give her a chance. You didn't give him a chance. How do, how, how, how do we know for sure? The servant of the Lord says it was at Calvary. Remember in Revelation 12, yeah. the devil drew a third of the stars of heaven. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The stars, the servants the of God, the angels. Yeah. It was at Calvary the two thirds was fully convinced who Satan was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the way down at Calvary, mm -hmm. they still had questions in their minds. They obeyed, they went along. But when they saw what the devil did to Jesus at Calvary, then it was that they were fully convinced. That is why the Lord must allow us to be tested and tried to see if we are truly faithful or not. You couldn't tell me 20 years ago I'd see anything of this sort in Adventism. If you said it, I'd be upset with you. I'd be mad. No, don't say that. These are God's people. But look at look look at it today. Yeah. Right here in Florida, Florida Conference is donating one million dollars to build a memorial mm -hmm. to Pulse. Pulse, the gay nightclub that was shot up on Friday night on the Sabbath. Mercy. Mm -hmm in which a Seventh-day Adventist man was killed. Mm -hmm. 
This is not just a nightclub, we shouldn't be there, period. But let alone on the Sabbath, Friday night. And tomorrow morning you present yourself before the church as the choir leader. And when the pastor found out he was living, he said, this man is not being buried in my church. It took an incident like that for him to recognize who his choir leader was. Not just a Columbus. <laughs> and now we are going to take a million dollars of your tithes and offering God's money Amen. to build a memorial for that event what kinds of minds are those and I must send God's money to you and I must follow you. It's not going to happen. God for me. Word of the Lord says, We shall not follow a multitude to do evil. And then he says in Isaiah 58, verse 1, Cry aloud, spear not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and tell my people their sins. So we must rise up against those things against paganism and against evil within. Look, we want to sit with these people in heaven. They're going to the head. They paid the price with their lives. They demonstrated faithfulness. What about us? We want to drive Bentleys and go sit beside them in the kingdom? No, it's not going to happen. I'm not saying you can't drive a Bentley. Get my point. Don't, don't get... Yes. You, you get my point. The point is not so much about the Bentley, but these are... Uh, what they are preaching, the, the prosperity gospel. Yes. You know, send the handkerchief, God will bless you. Send some holy water, God will bless you. He'll make you rich. He'll increase your territory like James. Yes. God wants you to be rich. Yes. He wants you to be powerful. That message is not from the world. He says, hardly can a rich man enter the kingdom. Amen. You know why? Riches consume the mind. And instead of focusing on the needs of God's people, we are focused on getting more and more. And more. That's the problem with riches. Yeah, yeah. It consumes you. Yeah. Let's wrap up this account. Our time is gone. It is abundantly clear that the saints were inspired to endure martyrdom by the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Will he take care of them, but not us? Often they appeared to deliberately invite death so that some author might have made the mistake of claiming that the martyrs were overzealous or that many died needlessly. The truth is that the martyrs were given supernatural boldness and courage as well as supernatural deliverance from pain. So when you are fretting, fretting out, fretting out your little fret, that oh, how am I going to stand this pain? You have no idea that when you go into the flames, you won't even feel anything. Because of God is a merciful God. All He wants is for you to pass the test, not to torture you to death. And that is why He won't burn the wicked in hell forever and ever and ever either. Which many teach that He will do. It's not true. The word says they shall be ashes under your feet. Malachi chapter 4. The burning is an everlasting burning. They will never come back. It doesn't mean that they are burning on and on and on. But the end of it is forever. Can you imagine God in ever watching these people 20, 20 million years from now still burning? And we're up there having a fine time? That's a lie. 
first of all, they would have eternal life as well. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the things, their eternal life would be in hell. Yeah. While our eternal existence, I wouldn't call that life, would be in heaven. Mm -hmm. And we would be more miserable than they. Exactly. Looking at them burning, I would be miserable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, I wouldn't, I couldn't stand it. And I know God is way more loving. Amen. So that, that is not true. In vain were Satan's efforts to destroy the church of Christ by violence. Mm -hmm. So he has to change tactics. Yes. Hey, come guys, let's have a meeting. Burning them alive is not working. Yes. No. We have to find a new way to get them. We have to get them. Mm -hmm. we, we have to get them. We have to do whatever we can to get them. They are more determined than us. Today we should be saying we have to get to heaven. We have to do whatever it takes to get there. Amen. To live with God for eternity. Amen. He's our creator and he's our redeemer. We want to be with him. <laughs> so in vain Satan's effort to destroy the church of Christ by violence. The great controversy in which the disciples of Jesus yielded up their lives did not cease when these faithful standard bearers fell at their poor post. By defeat they conquered. By what? Defeat. defeat they conquer. They may mock you. They may claim victory. But it's okay. Let, let them claim it. We'll find out in a little bit. You see? God's workmen are slain. But his work went steadily forward. Amen. The gospel continued to spread. Spread! Spread! I thought that they were killing the gospel. It wasn't working. Every blood shed sprang up as seed. If they were doing the same thing to us, we would have finished preaching the gospel and gone up to hell. We found a new strategy. By defeat they conquered. God's workmen were slain, but his work went steadily forward. The gospel continued to spread it, and the number of its adherents to increase. Yes. The legs of iron. The iron kingdom. Daniel chapter uh, 3. And the terrible beast of Revelation chapter 7 is trying to crush out Christianity and it is not. It penetrated into regions that were inaccessible even to the eagles of Rome. Thousands were imprisoned and slain, but others sprang up to fill their places. Their living example and data and testing one were a constant witness for the truth. And we at least expected the subjects of Satan were leaving his service and enlisting under the banner of Christ. Amen. The pagans wanted to be Christian. Yes. Yes. Look at how they died. I want my last days to be like that. Mm -hmm. Mystery, eh? The mystery. <laughs> It is our belief that in the future, when God allows his people to become martyrs, he will inspire men, women, and children in the same way. Amen. In like man. These witnesses will boldly testify to the point of tempting death, even challenging their persecutors to martyr them. As in past, as in the past, God will use the witness of such faith to save many who are still in spiritual Babylon. It is your punishment, persecution, that is going to speak the loudest to those who today are not listening. When that man says, don't preach, and you preach, and they threaten you, and you don't back down, and they do all manner of evil. It is in that 
that others will be converted. So what if they kill me and my death with a thousand souls? Wouldn't that be beautiful? Yes. Huh? Yes. Can you imagine sitting in heaven and a thousand people walk up to you and say, you see you, brother? It is because of the way they killed you why I read and I read the great controversy. It is because of what they did to you while I am here today. Amen. Would your life be worth it? Would you want to live any other life? Our time is done. Yeah. Let, let me read one last piece quickly. Sister Bernie, the promise to the overcomer. He who overcomes shall not be, be hurt by the second death. By the what? The second, the second death. death. Revelation 2.11 Before you go home today, vow within your hearts, I will not die the second day. So help me God. Amen. Lord, no matter how, if only sin die out of me, I will not die the second day. Sister Bird. What were the believers of Smyrna period to overcome or conquer? Without doubt, it was the fear of suffering and death for the sake of Christ. The reward for overcoming meant they would not be hurt or experience the second death. A review of scripture reveals that it speaks of several kinds of death. There is spiritual death and physical death. Spiritual death represents the lack of spiritual life. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Ephesians 2, 1. This is the lot of all who are born again in Christ. Amen. Literal or physical death is the cessation of life. Here there are two kinds of physical death. The first death is the result of sin, is the result of the sin of Adam. The sin father of the race. I'm sorry. The father of the race. In Adam all die. First Corinthians 15:22. And Romans 5.12 states, Therefore, just as, as through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because of because all sin. The first death is temporary. From it, all will return. All. All. All who go into the grave must come back to life. Mm. You must come back to receive your reward. Yes. Either eternal life or eternal death. That's why I ask you to vow within yourselves, in your bosom. Vow with God. God, I don't want to die the second death. Help me. Carry on, sister. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resur to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation john 5 28 29 everyone comes back from the tomb we have we have no say in the matter no choice at all everyone returns from the dead however we do have a choice as to when we come back yes there are two main resurrections, the first resurrection and the second resurrection, the resurrection of life or the resurrection of damnation. Those who are faithful to Christ return in the first resurrection to eternal life. Yes. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. And that is the death that matters most. Yes. Amen. That is the death that the devil don't want us to focus on or pay attention to second death that's the sting the only one who has died that death thus far is jesus christ on the cross yeah. Yeah. we have no clue what it is like mm -hmm. the best glimpse you'll have of that death is looking in the face of jesus mm -hmm. and all he can say is father why are thou forsaken yeah. Eternally cut off from God, that is what we will be. God's face is gone from him. 
Our language cannot explain that. But believe me, you don't want to go there. Keep going, sister. Those who return in the second resurrection return for punishment, which is the second death. This resurrection transpires at the close of the thousand years of Revelation 20. And the death that ensues is destruction in the lake of fire. From this death, there is no recovery. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the dead were judged according to their works. Go on. But the Mendes, put up that lake of fire for us again. Because sometimes we read these things and we think it's a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. But it's right here even now. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we see it, we realize that soon when God does his strange acts, mm -hmm. this is what the entire world is going to be like. Continue, Sister Pearl. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the dead were judged according to their works. And death and Hades, the grave, were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20, 12 to 15. See also Revelation 21, 8. The final fate of the unsaved is not eternal torment, but the cessation of life and total an annihilation. This destruction is everlasting destruction. Amen. 2 Thessalonians 1, verses 9. I want you to look into this cavern and see boiling earth. Pause right there. You see that? That's liquid rock. Liquid earth. That's not water. I think that's somewhere around 2,000 degrees C. That's under us. Mm. Mm. And God has left that there as a warning to us. When he says the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the entire world will be like that pool. Play, play a little more, Brother Mendes. Look at that. See that? See how it's boiling? So when the Bible speaks, don't, 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 don't take God as a liar. He left it there to remind us what this entire planet is going to be like. Boiling. Because sin must be destroyed. Every ounce of it. Every trace of it. All this contamination that has entered the atmosphere. The earth everywhere. It must be destroyed. It was made for the devil and his angels. But if we choose that destiny. After seven miserable, 70 miserable years around here. That we think is the greatest thing. We make a dreadful mistake. Mm -hmm. Not because of fear of that, mm -hmm. but because of the glory of God. God wants us, his children. Mm -hmm. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. Mm -hmm. He know it our frame. He wants us in his kingdom. He doesn't want to cast us into that. Mm -hmm. One of the Lord said, he that believeth and is baptized the same, Shall it's not maybe don't have to worry about it. Am I sure it is definitive? The same shall thank you, brother Mendes. The same shall be saved. It's God's promise. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But he's faithful. You know them, you girls know them and it's Two time will come and tell you how much he loves you, and then later on, you see him walking with another girl. As some men count, you girls do it too, don't bother. Oh. As some men count slackness, but he's faithful and just to cleanse you. It is he that cleanses us from sin, so that we don't have to go into that mess. 
Because yes, sin must go into that yes, place. Sir. Let him take your sin. He says, be also perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Yes. That's why I'm here today. I'm not following anybody who is leading us into mess and sin. I don't care the name. Seventh-day Adventist, Pentecostal, Church of God, Catholic. God has given us righteousness, and we must claim it. Amen. It's the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Before I shut up this morning, Amen. turn with me to Philippians chapter 3. Brethren, this is of eternal consequences. I beg of you, bear with me. We are going to feed you shortly. This Paul says, let's start at verse 7. But that which were gained to me, those things I count loss for Christ. Everything that we have today, we can dedicate to Christ. Any and everything. Your person, your bank account, your car, your house, your food. He can be dedicated to his work. Yes. He count all things but lost for Christ. Verse uh, 8 says, And doubtless I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but but." Don't. Don't. Refuse. Excrement. Mm -hmm. That I may win Christ and be found, being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteous, which is of God by faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Don't worry about death. Jesus told John he has the keys. And the fellowship of his suffering, he suffered, but we don't want to suffer. He suffered, but let me off lightly. Like we said last week, how are you going to explain to angels the suffering of Christ? Don't you know that you teach angels about grace? Do you think angels know grace? No. No. They never sin. They don't know what it is to be pardoned. You will have to teach them. You'll have to take those angels and sit them down and explain to them grace, suffering. Or are you going to do that and you don't know it? Fake? There's no fake in it. Be like Jesus, this my son. In the home and in the throne. Be like Jesus all day long. I would be. You sure you want it? Yes. You sure? Well, he must take it in his fullness. Mm -hmm. Not the cherry on the top, but everything. Mm -hmm. Let's finish this. Oh, the conclusion? And the fellow, yes, we are coming to you with that. The fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. Mm -hmm. You have no idea how beautiful that is. To be made conformable to even the very death of Christ. Next to him were those. Next to him, the word says, are those who suffered the most. Yes. Those who once persecuted him, but they switched sides. And they suffered for it. They are closest to him. And then going out from him are those who suffered for just a prayer. Wrap it up. Conclusion. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Revelation 2.11. Once again, we find that the Spirit has given a special, special message of encouragement. Jesus counsels, do not fear those who kill the body, but Amen. cannot kill the soul. Amen. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. The fires of the last day, Matthew 10, 28. The promise to the overcomer of the Smyrna, 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 Smyrna period of the church and to Christians of all periods is that they will take part in the first resurrection and the second death, death will have no power over them. Forevermore they will be imperv impervious to the forces of destruction Nothing will ever harm them again. 
What a comfort this truth is to the martyrs as they face their executioners. Amen. We're moving on to Pergamos next. When Satan realized that persecution wouldn't kill the church, he said, you know what, devils? We have to become Christians. Infiltration. We must infiltrate them. Let's become like them and infiltrate them. We'll study that the next time. Let us pray. So our eternal Father and our God, we thank you for reminding us that though they persecute us, it is you who have the keys of death yes. and the grave. Yes. You are our loving, merciful Savior. Yes, every pain, every temptation that we bear, you've borne it before. Yes. And in your mercy and your loving kindness, you <coughs> promise to shorten this time. For if you do not shorten it, not a single soul would be saved. Mm -hmm. And you promise that in your word, at this time, you will stand up. You will stand for your people. So Lord, let us focus our lives on doing the work of the Master. Those of us who have not yet given our hearts to him, we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will work upon the hearts and that they will confess Jesus Christ in his fullness. They will seek to enlist as soldiers of Christ in your kingdom. We will seek to flee the destruction that is about to come, even if we have to suffer the affliction for that season. But at last, we must be saved in your kingdom. So bless your waiting children again. Deliver us from evil. Strengthen our resolve to do right, because it is right, leaving consequence to you. That when you shall come, we will be ready to go home and spend the ceaseless ages of eternity with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we ask it. Amen. Amen.